Welcome to God's Vision in Motion. I'm Evangelist Willie Smith along with my wife today to continue uh, to bring you the Word of God and uh, in a simple way that maybe you can understand, maybe you can learn something that we hope that we can be a blessing to you. But before we get into that, I just want to have a word of prayer and acknowledge my Lord and Savior. Yes. Father God, we thank you as we come together, Father God, to ministry to your word to the people out there father god to those who have ears to hear father god those who are thirsty for your word for we know father god that your word will not return void and obedience to your word by the thought of the head of the church he said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature those that have ears to hear let them hear and we thank you father god for this day this great opportunity that you have blessed us with we thank you for my, the one that have did all this for us, Father God. We praise you, Father, who have set all this up for us freely, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, that this heart is in that ministry, that your word go forth. And we thank you for blessing him, that the blessing of the Lord continue to be upon him and bless him and add no sorrow. We thank you, Father God, for this day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, thank you well, for joining us. Welcome, honey. Yes, to hi, be with how are me. You? So glad to be with you again that we have discussed this. We've talked about it, and not only talked about it, we've been living this. Yes. And that's the good news about it, to be able to know that we have hope. Yes. You know, because we know that the world, looking at the world today, if you don't know you need some help today, you've really been in a hole. You like that thing that put his head in the sand yes. and leave his backside out. <laughs> what is that, the ostrich? ostrich. ostrich. <laughs> so we want to begin to share some word with you out there today. And we hope that something that we've said that will be a blessing to you. And the thing about it, if you have an argument about it, check the Bible. Because we're not coming to bring some denominational of what someone else said, we're bringing you directly what the Word of God said. And that's why if you have your Bible, go get your Bible and take some notes. If you don't have a Bible, take some right that we, later on we're going to give you some scriptures that you can go to to follow. And this is some of the scriptures that we are talking about today. We're still on there. This is part two of what we said, uh, the Holy Spirit within, because without the Holy Spirit, we just make it a lot of noise, based upon the scripture and not following what Jesus told them to do. And we know that there was those, that, the 12 that followed him, walked with him for three and a half years, ate with him and everything, and he told them not to leave until he, they was endured with power. I mean, you think about that. These people, and then we find that they, on the day of the Pentecost, was fully come. They was in one place, on one accord. Nobody was up jumping around trying to tell the other one what to do. But, you know, that was a, it's, a, it's amazing how we have gra gravitated to earthly things, worldly stuff, into the ministry. You know, sometimes you look at the ministry, you don't know whether you're in a walk, rock group of what you got folks running around taking pictures and doing all that and expecting the Holy Spirit to show up in that kind of situation. You know, and uh, if you're not spiritual led nowadays, you can be led down the road to any kind of stuff. And the Bible said, let me uh, uh, read, the, I think it's in first, yeah, 14, John chapter 14 and verse 15. And this is Jesus, the one who died on the cross. He's the head of the church. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's Jesus speaking. And in the book of uh, the beginning of the church, Acts 1-8, why don't we turn that? And I want you to, in the book of uh, uh, Acts 1-8, what he had told them to do. These, this was not a suggestion. The commandment. The first chapter in Acts. First chapter. Verse 2. Okay, here we go. Until the day in which he was taken up. By the way, I'm reading from the King James Version Bible. Let's turn in the book up to the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 2. Amen. Until the day in which he was taken up, 
After that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments, commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also, how many, how far would you like for me to read this? Now, I'll, I'll let to you. whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the mm -hmm. Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Praise the Lord. And this is the thing, uh, this is the thing that uh, uh, we, don't, we don't get because you got a lot of pastors standing in pulpits today without the Holy Spirit because uh, if anybody in that church need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, it's the pastor. Just like me, at the head of the house, I'm the head of the house. And as I go, the family goes. You know, some things, you know, if you leave, then things can get out of, uh, uh, out of control. But the whole bottom line is, Jesus is the head of the church, and he said to them, and not just said to them, commanded them. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go on because I want, I want this to kind of sink in. Because sometimes I think we just say things and just get over and nobody really hear what you said because everybody's hooping and, and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But you don't get nothing out of that. Because he's the one that said my people will destroy for lack of knowledge. And the, and the thing about it is that when you point out scripture, the Bible said, to whom much is given, of them much is required of that individual. And the thing about it is when you reject what God has said, when you you object, rejected him. So let's, uh, uh, what he said, I want this to sink in. He gave them commandment, commanded them. Uh, that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Right. And, uh, and he said, these are speaking of the thing pertaining to the kingdom of God. That's what he was speaking of. So let's go. I want you to read verse, uh, uh, what is that, 8. Verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And, and yes. that's the thing. What you said receive power. Receive and that's power. what every believer, every believer in the body of Christ if you don't know that you need power in these days, if you don't know that you need the Holy Spirit, something's wrong. You're not born again. If you don't believe that you need power to be able to see, to be able to, and I, I believe that's why so many people have come found it, run into the altars, every, if they had four altar calls a day, the same people would be in them. And the, and, the, and the people that need to be be there, the people that need to be given, a, they can't get there. I've seen people leave because other people just trapped them, just like push them on back because they want to get to that little touch, you know, but, and, and receive nothing. And so the thing, the good news is about it, God wants you to be filled with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is your... In other words, he just stand by. Let's read some scripture what the comforter. Let's look at what it, when it, in uh, John chapter 14, I believe it is. Uh, yes, 14, 26, when the comforter come, what he would do. He would be not only that, but he would be your counselor. He would be your helper, intercessor. All these things that he would be for you, and all you have to do is write down some of the scriptures that uh, he'd be your advocate. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know, I just keep saying this, but if you don't know today, if you don't know that you need some help, you really been in a hole somewhere because this world has gone nuts. And, the, and if you don't have peace, and I'm talking about the God kind of peace, he gives you peace. The Holy Spirit is your helper. He's the one that will warn you when you're going down the wrong street. If you're getting on the freeway somewhere, he already know that person out there with a gun or whatever he's doing. You can't even ride the freeway. He's not in peace other than somebody shooting at you for no reason whatsoever. Because 
people are going off. They're letting them out of jail as fast as the, these judges and everything. This is the thing we need to have the Holy Spirit about to be able to pray about these issues. People telling us about the gangs. And all this is rising up in our own, in our community. Well, we need to be prayed, but you need to be able to pray the word of God. Just getting out there saying something means absolutely squat to the devil. You got to have the word. The Bible said, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Well, the whole armor of God is the word of God. To be able to give back to God and stand against the wiles of the devil. Because the Bible says, in, John, in uh, Luke chapter 19, 10, that he given us power to tread on all the ability of the enemy. And the thing about it, most of us standing around arguing about, well, did he do this or what? Just receive. The Bible says, just don't think about it because you can't figure God out. Just receive it. If you're a Christian, all the things that God has, has provided for us, you ought to want it. Because he cares more about you. He's like a real, a real genuine father. He cares about you. And he's given all these gifts. We saw that. We see that in the book of uh, 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 Second Peter. He said, I've given you all things. Second Peter, he said, I've given you all things pertaining to life and godliness. He's given us promises. But the whole thing about you got to, when you hear the word of God, and, and, and you can see it, in the book of Acts, we're going to give you point scriptures out that you can write down, that you can follow along. And everywhere I follow, uh, 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 saw in the Bible, it talks about the Holy Ghost. Told them not to do something. Not only that, spoke and kept them from going to certain cities to preach. And he said, go in all, he's the one that said, go in all the world to preach the gospel. Well, if he, he's the one that's giving them the directions, then you ought to be able to, if the Holy Ghost said don't go there, or don't go there, and that's what you need to be mindful of all, t all the time. Find out what the Holy Ghost want me to talk about. Not some man that, you, that you're trying to follow, because he's not the head of the church. The head of this, the church that we're talking about, where you can go to heaven who died on the cross for you, is the one we're talking about. Now, if you're following somebody else, that's a different story. I don't know where that leads to, but I know one thing. If you follow in Christ, where it leads to. And, uh, and, the, uh, uh, and the, the good news is about when you follow him, he will show you. The Holy Spirit, the Bible said the Holy Spirit will show you. He will take up mine. But you got to study the word. You got to put in for him to be able to take up mine and show it unto you. He's our helper. And I, I hear a lot of people say we went, well, I think we talked about this the last time we was home, how some say he leaks out. Oh, yeah. Or they need a refill. Or he, he needs, a, a, you know, a, but the whole bottom line, if you read the scripture, he said, I will never, I'll give you the comforter. And he would never leave you. He would never forsake you. And the whole, uh, okay, the, the other thing I like to draw out today, you receive Jesus Christ. I guess you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you did that, you did it by faith. You never saw Jesus. But then he said, receive the Holy Ghost, you got a problem with it. <laughs> that don't add up to me. If you was, And it says, he come, the Father, I would pray the Father, and he would give you another comfort, just like me. In other words, he walked with them, but he wants you to have help. He not, he not leave you offering, as the scripture says. I will not leave you. I will come to you. The good news is about it, you can know this by receiving. Once you receive him, then he'll confirm it. But if you don't, just, well, you know, I believe I believe that that won't cut it. The scripture taught when you believe something spiritually, it means that you received it. Now, in the world, there's a different belief. You know, oh, yeah, I believe that. Well, the Bible said the devil believed and also trembled. And he hasn't got saved yet. But the whole, the good news is about it. If you, if you had any problem, today could be your day of the rest of your life. Living in the fullness of those things that God had provided for you in Christ. And this is one of them. The Holy Spirit. He wants you to have the Holy Spirit. Not just have the Holy Spirit to edify, to be able to build up yourself, mm -hmm. you know. Let's let's look at uh, something else here. As I, 
get all carried away with the Holy Spirit because I know the need that that you have as a believer. I know that for a fact. But uh, now I want to talk a little about this because I know it's going to rub some people this wrong way. I would like to ask a question. I wrote myself this. This is a question. Why are you standing in the office of ministry without the Holy Spirit? And, but Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. So why are you standing in, in an office to minister to God people without the Holy Spirit? Not just uh, even though you have it, not even telling anybody about the Holy Spirit. You must not, if you have it, and I know how good the Holy Spirit is, you can help by telling somebody else about it. I mean, you can say, well, my, 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 my wife have it, my children have it, but you're supposed to have it. You're supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit to be able to discern, to be able to teach whoever come into your whoever come into your ministry because he talked about these are perilous times. Evil coming into the ministry. Those that you gravitate to, those that you just think that going to be the one that's going to carry you over. The only one going to be able to carry when you're rooted and grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ and begin to do it his way to find out where did I go wrong? I need to I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and get along and stop. Uh, in the scriptures, I noticed over in the, I will take you over there, honey, before Thank I know well, this is a little side issue, but let's go over to uh, Acts chapter 6. And it talks about this. There rose a murmuring and complaining in the church. Uh, Acts chapter, I believe it's chapter 6. Where there rose a murmuring and complaining in the church, and these were the disciples. These was, and they said, "You have that." I have Acts chapter six, which verse? Verse one. Acts six and one. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their win because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them, and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give them but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Proos, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Pavninas, and Nicholas, and Proselyte. He was a proselyte of Antioch. Of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Praise, and, okay. Praise the Lord. Well, we see this. And the thing that I want you to see here is the Holy Ghost. In other words, he chose somebody, look out among you, and said, look out among you, find somebody full of the Holy Ghost, with an honest report, full of, didn't just say with the Holy Ghost, but he said full of the Holy Ghost. And when he, when they, it proved, it, 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 one of the things about it, let's, let me look, let me say, when they set them before the apostles, when they had prayed and laid hands on them, the word of God grew and increased. It means number. People came and accepted. That's what it means when the number grew. It grew yes. because people today, and I know I'm going to get some, uh, some mail about this because people are doing all kind of stuff, trying to grab, grow their church. They're doing all kind of mess going <laughs> And the sad part about it, if you think about it, honey, 
if this is the case, I need to pick up the phone or get call up another church and tell them, listen, let's all stop saying it. <laughs> let's all ever stop fornicating <coughs> and running around on our wives and doing different things. Maybe they will stop. You think they will stop? Right. And rather than putting on some clothes, tell them to put on a jacket and everybody come in in the same colors. Come in, I mean, I mean, you just think. I mean, you just think about how it is. But the whole thing about uh, the spiritual growth, the blood of Jesus is not mentioned in, in churches. The blood, I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, he said they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the, uh, the, mouth of, uh, the word of their confession. That's how you overcome the enemy. Then you got people out there that all of a sudden, and we've, uh, the thing about it, we've seen this. So many churches. We, I mean, we weren't born yesterday. We, we went. To, we've been to different churches. We've been on board. Uh, we used the administration of some churches. We, and it wasn't that we were just roaming, ro roaming around here, it just having that way because we thought these were people of like faith, and we went to help them out in the ministry. But we could not go along with a lot of things that they wanted to do to try to bring. People in, you know, trying to draw a crowd. Trying to, if if we can find that in the Bible, uh, I know God gives us wisdom of how to do certain things. But it certainly has to be by the Word of God. The Word of God is the one that, and if it's taught and preached continually, whether the Bible study all the time, where people can come in. Uh, I didn't know I was being drafted in to a meeting one time. <laughs> it just happened that we wound up in that meeting and everything, but then I was voted in to be on the board. And president. <laughs> yeah, it was the places I've been, I wound up being the president of the, and not even looking to, to be that. But the whole thing about I just couldn't go along when I saw someone, when somebody come up to me talking about something and I know it's not in the word. And it's not have nothing to do with, uh, uh, then I'm gonna have to put you in remembrance of what you're supposed to be doing in order for people to come, for families. For families to come in, when families come into a ministry and, and, and the whole thing about it, it's God that draws the people anyway. That's right. It's God that draws, the, he's the one that draws people. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw, I'll draw men under me. But if he's not lifted up, it's going to be a job then. If you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence, of, uh, and the Bible talks about it in the book of Jude, building up yourself. And I heard a, a, a situation the other week or so ago about uh, gifts. God doesn't need our gifts. He'll use our gift, but he says the gift that he's given us is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will be in you, laying, don't doing nothing because you're not allowing him to work in you. He's still there. He hasn't left. Because the Bible says he would never leave you. Nor forsake you. Nor forsake you. So when the Holy Spirit comes in, he's waiting on you mm -hmm. to say, I need your help. I can't do this on my own. I come to the, it's kind of like that passing gear in your car. I, you know, I want to get around this situation, and I, I need your help. The scriptures always tell us, acknowledge him in all our ways. He would direct our path. And if we're not doing that, you know, uh, all this, uh, 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 the enemy comes in mm -hmm. like a flood. And you need the Holy Spirit to be able to discern what spirit is this. You, ne you need the Holy Spirit to, because God is a spirit, and he's given us a uh, access to be able to come into the kingdom of God, but you got to come into this kingdom by faith. And along with the Holy Spirit, helping you to be able to see what you have in the kingdom and what you can do in the kingdom. But without the Holy Spirit, you'll just be out there making a lot of noise, and it'll be hard, because you always be trying to conjure up something to do. Some <laughs> Uh, to do this or to do that and every, everything. He, he said, what he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is, is, is light. Learn of me. But most of the time we're trying to learn of what somebody else got a hold to maybe 50 years ago and we don't, and, and the only thing that can really keep it in now probably is the finances. The, when the whole bunch come in, it's, it's, 
It's money in that. Yes. And I hate to say it, but I just said I have to be led by the Spirit of God to tell me what to, what to say. And, and I have to say it because he's my boss. And if, if anyone that have a challenge with me, I always look for somebody to call me and ask me, why do you say this? I want somebody. I do. I look for uh, any ministry, any pastor to confront me and ask me, why do you say this thing? Because most of the time, people will avoid you. It might just be two or three people in the ministry that want to walk the walk, but they become like, they'll oh, get out of our way because we're doing something else. They don't want to hear from people that have, in other words, like the book of, uh, what is that, Fifth of, uh, Philippians, who talks about a race. And he said, talk about running with these have, who have accomplished something, who faith follows. I believe it's Philippians chapter 4, I believe it is. But it talks about this race. Paul was running this. But he got to be around people that overcome it, who are doing something. Not somebody been around the several, call, you know, in other words, I'm a pastor, but now I'm over here doing X, Y, Z. Well, if I was a pastor over there, what was I preaching? And now, now I'm over here. What? What? What happened? I'm over here. I'm ordained to preach over here, but what I left, now I'm over here. What was I preaching? Now, with me, I didn't go to a church. I didn't come out of the homes. I didn't come out of no drunk, drug addict place. I didn't come out of no uh, uh, place. I was just sitting up in a, <laughs> in a house one night, and all of a sudden the place lit up with me. And I got saved, gave my life to the Lord because of that experience that I had. I never said what I was going to do, but when I got a hold to the Word of God and began to go to a place that was teaching me the Word of God, and I saw something, my, my understanding was open and praise God. I said, hey, I can get me a Bible and I can study and I can find out if these things are so. Okay, I found the book. You, you I found, have to which verse? Uh, Let's see. I don't remember what verse it is. Uh, where Paul was running a race, he says, I run this race. race. Follow those who faith follows. Philippians, let me see if I can find it in. <laughs> yes, see. Not this one. This one. Yeah, go ahead and read that one. You want that? Mm -hmm. we want, we're talking about running this race, right? <laughs> so being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to go back and read verse uh, in uh, chapter 3, verse 13. 3, 13. 13. No, study 12. Okay, not as much I had, right there? Yeah, not as though. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after it, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. And I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Yep. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same, the same thing. thing. Let us mind the same thing. And that's so important. And brothers, but, be followers of me, mm -hmm. and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Praise the Lord. And this is, that's the thing that uh, you, you have to know to get into the scripture, find out what God wants you to do because you don't know 
sometimes people take, a, you know, like they're going somewhere. I remember we were following somebody and, and uh, they decided to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were supposed to be trailing each other, but some of the traffic got a little heavy and they went one way. Yeah. And we spoke been trailing each other, but the person that was driving didn't have sense enough to kind of say, well, wait a minute, let me break down and slow down. He just kept driving the same way, and we got off track. And that can happen spiritually, where you follow somebody, and all of a sudden they decide to take a detour. Well, when you take a detour, detour Satan in the end, if you get off the word of God, you get off the word of God for a few minutes, you need to know that you have an enemy to your faith. And he will come in to bring in doubt or suggestion to a person. And we're all vulnerable to that. You know, you can't say because the Bible says there's no good thing dwelling in the flesh. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And, and the whole thing about it talks about we're all tempted when we come into our own battles of lust. We all could be tempted. Human. You know, and so the whole thing about somebody come along and tempt you, can I be tempted with money? Can I be tempted, it might not be money, but can I be tempted around a lot of women? You know, a bunch of women around, you know, and most of them know how to get next to you if you don't stay on the run, if you just, how you doing, and keep on going, because there's some beautiful women in the world. But you got to know that you know that you know, and the Bible said, Paul says, I keep under my body. You got to know how to do it, and the Holy Spirit will help you to do that. He always make a way for you to escape, but you got to be filled with the Spirit. And the whole thing about it, we talked about that and uh, about speaking in other tongues. Well, let's see. It talks about the speak, speaking in tongues. You edify yourself. Uh, and uh, what was that? Uh, uh, when you talked about edifying, was that uh, Joshua one? Was that? Uh, let's see. Jude one and eight. Jude one eight or Joshua one eight. You no, know, it's got to be Jude. Okay. Talk about building up yourself, praying in the Holy Ghost. Yeah, no twenty. Jude twenty, verse twenty. One and twenty. One in twenty. Now, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, how can, how can you build yourself up? You can't. Well, Jude one and twenty. Well, our time is winding down, and I just hope we've said something. The whole thing got me really read up about these these this thing I saw on the internet. <laughs> I don't usually deal with that internet thing, but I was just prompted to find out something about it because I've been so confused with so many things that people are doing today to try to draw young people into the churches. And they're doing all kind of stuff, spending all kind of things that not saying, hey, listen, I, I got to get along with the Lord and find out what he do because the only thing that I talk about where it talks about a dress code is over in the book of uh, Colossians when he talk about put on Christ. Put on Christ, take off, uh, uh, mortify your body, and uh, those type of things that I see in the Word of God, and begin to preach the Word. The Bible talks about when they, when they preach the Word, they went everywhere preaching the Word, of God, and the Lord added to the church. But you got to be an example. You cannot be an example if I'm running to, like I said, if I'm running to the altar in front of my kids every week. Well, guess what they're telling them? They, if it ain't working for me, how is it going to work for them? If they see me crawling to the altar all the time, every time the altar, if they don't see me being a blessing to somebody else, grow up in the things of God, I wouldn't even be an example to you. No, you if you saw me running and <laughs> all the way down on the crying and moaning and going over, you wouldn't have no hope. <laughs> <laughs> really, I mean, think about it. You would not have any hope. But when you see me stand up, and so we're going through. You stand up like a man. I'm on, standing on God's word. Standing on the word of God. Not in my own strength, but we're going to stand on the word of God. We're coming, whatever it is, we're coming through that. And then when my children see this, it gives them some hope. They yes. say, hey, 
Mom and daddy, we know that they are uh, uh, men uh, 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 godly people. They know that. And all of a sudden, they begin to rise up. Then they can teach that to But if they see me and you running and don't look who we are, and we're trying to puff up and trying to get good at points with other people, and they recognize that. These children today, they see what you're trying to do. They know that you're trying to get over here and and, and, and get with this person and you're some of the meanest. So we reckon that some of the meanest people be standing at the door <laughs> with, the, with the hand out. You know, it's the saddest thing about it. They don't know that you, when you feel with the spirit, you can recognize the thing. A lot of times, you don't even want to see something, but, but he taught us how to stand, how to go through stuff. So, but my time is, my time in, in this message is up. Before I go, I want to give you an opportunity to, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Just say, dear God in heaven, I come to you. I'm a sinner, and I can't save myself, but I've heard something, and I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. This had been in my heart for some time, and I didn't know how to do it, but right now, based upon your word, I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. In my heart, I believe that you raised him from the dead for my justification, and I thank you, and right now, your word says, if I do this, I'm saved, and I thank you for my salvation right now in Jesus' name, and now you're a candidate to receive the Holy Spirit by proxy. As I lay my hands upon you by proxy, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. And that's the evidence right there, that they all spoke in tongues. If you read the book of Acts, uh, uh, chapter, so they all spoke. Not some of them, but all spoke. And then it goes on to say some in the streets heard them talking their language. They didn't know the language, but now they, they was aware, wait a minute, these people can't know, know this language. So it was a move of God to let the other people know that on the Gentiles and on the Grecians and all, Whoever come, what they said the tongue, there were people from every nation. And they all was filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. And this is gift is for you. And if you humble yourself and stop being so stubborn, God will fill you with the Holy Spirit right now. Just submit to God. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from your mind. He will flee from you. But Father, we thank you and we praise you for this great opportunity that you have blessed us with once again. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise and all the thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.